All right, everybody. Uh, here is the video that goes with Worksheet 3 from Unit 3. And as you can see, I have the graph on here that you should also have on your, uh, well, I don't know if you printed it out, you'll have it on a paper. Otherwise, you will have it on your screen, and then you probably sketched it maybe in your comp book. I don't know. Uh, whatever you did, uh, I'm sure it's fine. Now, there was a good question on classroom in one of the class periods, and uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to start with that, I suppose. Um, when we used to have, oh, I don't know if I can do this without having to erase it all. <laughs> when we used to have XT graphs, XT graphs that looked like that. Well, actually, they didn't have they didn't have to look like that. They could look like uh, anything that had a constant slope, and we said that the slope of that graph is what. I hope you're thinking velocity. The slope of that graph is velocity. Now, that same graph, that same graph, if we make it now a velocity time graph, the slope of that graph does not mean the same thing as the slope of the xt graph. So the slope of the, pos of the velocity time graph is what we call acceleration. So that's what we're looking at now. So all of these VT graphs that we're looking at, they are telling us that there is acceleration because there's a slope on those graphs. And a slope on a VT graph means acceleration. So I hope you're getting the dis kind of distinguishing between those two. XT graphs and VT graphs can tell us different things. Now here's what I hope. I hope that I can erase this whole thing. Oh, good. Oh, that's fantastic. I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. All right. Now, back to the actual work. Two minutes in here. Two and a half minutes in. Oh my gosh. So, here we go. Notice this, this line on this graph is a negative slope. That is a negative slope. Starts at 35 meters per second. Again, many of you are still interpreting these graphs as though this is position. This is not position. This is velocity. And that's going to change how you interpret what this graph's telling us. So starting at 35 meters per second, and what's happening to the velocity? It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually, five seconds in, what's the velocity? None. Zero. So what we can do is this. Draw a little, da oh boy, dashed line here like so, and then draw another dashed line over. And I can use the entire, I can use the entire uh, line here, and then I can look at this part right there, and that's a what? That's my rise, right? That, in fact, is my, and I'm going to call it this, A, which is, again, delta, oh, poop, delta V, change in velocity, remember that's what the delta means, over the change in time. Now, what's my delta V on this graph? Well, it looks like it's 35 meters per second. It goes from 35 to none. Well, from 35 to none is a change of negative 35 meters per second. And that happened over a time interval of what? Well, from here to here. And how much time is that? Well, that looks like five seconds to me. So five seconds. Now, oh, there we go. So what is that telling us? Well, that is a slope of negative. Oh, my gosh. Mm, this thing, this thing. That is a slope of negative seven meters per second for every second. Now, what exactly is that slope telling us? It's telling us that the velocity, that the velocity is changing by negative seven meters per second, and that's happening every one second. 
So we're having a change in velocity of negative 7 meters per second for every second. Now that's about mm, maybe 15 miles per hour-ish. Yeah, I'd say about 15, 15 miles per hour around. That means this thing is changing its velocity. Again, the negative in this case is telling us that the velocity is getting smaller. It's decreasing negatively by 7 meters per second every second, or negative 15 miles per hour for every second. All right, now, that's, that's question one. Question two, write the equation for the graph. All right, so equation of the graph. Remember, folks, we're talking about, we are talking about y equals mx plus b. Now, on the last one, I noticed a lot of people in their equations had position as the y variable. Uh, I do not see position here. I see velocity here. That is the y variable. It's no longer a position time graph. It is a velocity time graph. Get it right. Okay, so let's go with velocity. And I'm just going to abbreviate because writing with this thing can be a pain. So velocity equals. Now, m. m is my slope. What's my slope? Oh, I found that up here. Negative 7 meters per second for every second. And I am going, oh my gosh, this thing. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to put that in parentheses because it's a number and a unit and it's kind of messy. And so that is my slope, negative 7 meters per second for every second, times what? Well, what is my x variable? My, my variable on the x-axis is, oh, that it is, it's time. So I go here and I write time. Oh, time, mm, dot the i, oh my. Are you kidding me right? There we go. Barely, barely. Time. Plus the y-intercept. Now, the last few graphs, we haven't had any y-intercepts. But as you look over here on the graph, we see, oh, look at that. That is a large y-intercept. In fact, in it, where is it hitting the graph? The line hits the graph on the y-axis at 35. 35 what? Meters per second. 35 meters per second. All right, so that is my y-intercept. Plus 35. Oh, gosh. 35, 35 meters per second. This thing takes so long to like, oh, <laughs> there, oh my gosh. All right, 35 meters per second, got it. Now notice it's positive. Remember, the, the y-intercept is positive. Now the slope is negative, but the y-intercept is positive, okay. This is going to take forever. Three. Okay, so that's that's three. Mm -hmm. So there's one. One. There's two. And three. What is the acceleration of the object? Mm. Kind of a trick question, but not really. Notice how I found my slope. When I found my slope, I actually called it what it is. Acceleration is the slope of this graph. So that was a question that was asked on Classroom in one of the eighth, eighth period, I believe. And I responded to that uh, question. And, and the question was, when, when we are asked, like in this case, what is the acceleration of the object? How do we know what to do for that? Like, what is the acceleration of the object? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind you that for position time graphs, the slope was velocity. But we're not looking at position time graphs now. We're looking at velocity time graphs. And velocity time graphs, the slope, doesn't mean velocity anymore. It means acceleration. So that is the acceleration. That slope that you found, the change in velocity over the change in time, the delta v over the delta t, how much the velocity change for every unit of time, that is acceleration. So that simply is your answer to that question. So three, 
The answer is 7. Negative 7 meters per second for every second. So again, um, it's right there. I'm trying to get you to make the connection between the slope of a VT graph and that that is acceleration. <laughs> what is the object's velocity after 20 seconds? Now we have to use the equation. So we have to use the equation that you just wrote for number two. So for number four, we have to use the equation velocity, which is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find out what the velocity is at some specific time. And it is seven, negative seven meters per second for every second which I know some of you, it sounds kind of messed up, but remember, um, and I said this in the other video, if you did not watch the video after worksheet two, shame on you, because this right here, the negative seven meters per second, for every second, that's telling us how much the velocity changes per or for every second. So it's a velocity change per every one second. That's, what, that's why it's kind of weird the way it looks, because it's per second per second, but that's, that's why I say for every meters per second, for every second. It's telling you how much the velocity changes for every one of those. Now, when it's miles per hour for every second, that makes, I, I feel like that makes more sense, and it sounds more, uh, more normal, I guess, if you will, if you say that the velocity changed by negative 15 miles per hour for every second. That makes sense because it's not per second per second. Uh, but, but this, the meters and the seconds is, is what we use in the scientific community, and so we have to kind of stick to that. Anyway, okay, move, moving on. So instead of writing the word time, instead of writing the word time, I will write what in its place? 20 seconds, which is what was asked about in the question, 20 seconds. And I cannot forget about my y-intercept of 35 meters per second. Now, as you see, the, the, the work looking here, we have negative 7 times 20. But notice second here cancels the bottom most second here, which means we're going to have negative 7 times 20, which is what? Negative 140. Negative 140 what? Meters per second. Because look, that's what we have left. That's the part of the unit we have left after that goes away and that goes away. What we're left with is that part. Plus, we cannot forget about our 35 meters per second still sitting in the wings over here as the y-intercept. And that is what our velocity is. So what's negative 140 meters per second plus positive 35 meters per second? That should give you a velocity of negative 105, oh boy, meters per second. Now, question, what does that even mean? Like negative 105 meters per second? How can you have a velocity that's negative 105 meters per second? That is, my friends, a negative velocity. What did this thing start with? A positive velocity. Now it has a negative velocity. And again, 20 seconds is off our grid. It only goes out to 8. And we only have information out to 5. So that means that line would continue going down, 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 down. But what's happening down here? Down here, if we look at our graph, those are negative values. It would be like negative 5 right there, and negative 10 right there, and negative 15 right there, and negative 20 right there. And it just keeps going down and down and down as more and more negative. But the numbers, the values are getting bigger, but they're just negative. That means this line here, as it keeps going and going and going and going, to get out to 20 seconds, I mean, it'd be way over here, but it would be off the screen, all the way down off the screen. That means... 105 meters per second in the negative direction. That's what that's telling us. Hope you're picking up on that. All right, number five. Okay, so that was four. Five. What is five? Oh, describe the motion. All right. Oh, I've just tried to write with the laser pointer. You know, it's getting to be a long day when you're trying to write with the laser pointer. All right, describe the motion in words. Now, this, oh, jeez. Um, I'm about to, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the video. 
and then I'm going to bring it back after I've already written it, just so the video doesn't take so dang long. How about, how about that? How about that? Okay, I'm back. Oh, look at that. The whole thing's written out. Now let me go through what I wrote and why I wrote it. Another question was asked by another student about um, how do we know where to say the object started. Well, we don't know where the object started because the y-intercept is not a position. It is a velocity. Remember, what is the one thing? There is one thing that a VT graph cannot tell us. One thing. The VT graph cannot tell us what? Position. It, excuse me. It cannot tell us position ever. So we can't say where the object started. But we can say the object starts with a velocity of, oh, I just noticed something. Oh, boy. Shame on me. Positive. Oh, no. That's like, there we go. Okay, positive. I forgot to, I forgot to write the positive on there positive. That's not, that's not, oh, jeez. Oh my gosh. Positive 35 meters per second. That's important because again, it's traveling in the positive direction. So it starts with a positive, a velocity of positive 35 meters per second and gets slower by 7 meters per second every second for 5 seconds when it stops. That's when it gets to zero velocity. Not zero position, zero velocity. That's when it stops. All right, everybody got that? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, oh my gosh, my back. Oh, oh my back. Ow. Hold on a second. I don't know why I tell you hold on a second because see, I'm just pausing the video and so for you, like nothing ever happened. I didn't stop. It just, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, my back, I was having a little spasm in my back. I had, had to, had to work it out. I lifted something heavy the other day, uh, which probably wasn't very smart, and uh, tweaked my back a little bit, and whoo boy, oh, uh, it's hurting. All right, so anyway, um, where was I? Oh yeah, number six. That was number five. Number six. I think we're going to fit it all on here. Daggone. All right, number six. Hold on, let me get a different color. Uh, uh, let's go with red. All right, so six. You're supposed to make a motion map. Now, folks, I noticed. I noticed. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on. Something I need to point out. This right here, um, I'm hoping that none of you described on your worksheet that the object was traveling in a negative direction because it was not traveling in a negative direction. Look at all the velocities. The velocities are all positive. That means it's traveling in a positive direction, positive velocity. But the slope's negative, right, which is telling you, in this case, it's getting slower by 7 meters per second every second. The velocity is going down, and it's decreasing by 7 meters per second every second. That's what this slope's telling us. Not that it's traveling in a negative direction. It's still traveling in a positive direction, but it's slowing down, all right? Which is going to impact your motion map here. Now, again, we don't... Oh, hold on, let me get... We do not know where this object actually is. We don't know where it starts. If you want it to start on the zero position, by all means, have it start at the zero position. Uh, you, you don't have to, but you can. Now... The question is, what is it doing at the beginning? How is it moving at the start? Well, we just said, it starts with a velocity of positive 35 meters per second. Positive mean my arrow has to be which way? In the positive direction. Now, is 35 meters per second fast or slow? Well, it's probably about 75 miles an hour. So I'd say it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty fast. So that means my arrow that I start with, my first arrow, has to be long because it's fast and positive because it's in the positive direction. So my first arrow for the motion map is going to be, and again, it doesn't matter where you start it, but it's going to be a long arrow. My next arrow, like the next second, it's not as fast, which means it's a little shorter. The next second, it's not as fast as that, which means a little shorter. The next second, 
it's a little less than that because again, it's getting slower. And then finally the last second, it stops. Notice I put five, I put five dots because I had five seconds on my graph. And so again, the first second, it was going pretty fast, but it slowed down. The second second, slowed down even more. Third second, slowed down even more. Fourth second, even more. And then finally by the fifth second, it was stopped. So that is what the motion map would look like. And don't forget, we have to indicate what the A is in this case. And the A for this motion map is, what did we find out earlier? We found out that it is negative. The A, or acceleration, is a negative seven meters per second for every second, which means my, my arrow to indicate my acceleration has to be in the negative direction. Have we got that? Do not draw your arrows the same length because that indicates constant velocity. We do not have constant velocity. We have a constant acceleration because this slope is constant and that slope means acceleration. My velocity though is changing. It's actually getting smaller in this case. All right, that was six. Finally seven, which I skipped on the last video. I apologize for that. Um, here's how this is gonna work for, for this part. The XT graph. The XT graph. What you have to look at to draw the XT graph, remember, I hope you're following along. The velocity value here tells you what the slope is here. The slope of this graph is velocity. The value you read off this graph is velocity. So this object, whatever it is, is going to start with a fast positive velocity. Fast positive velocity. What does that look like here? What does fast positive velocity look like on an XT graph? Like if you look at the, think about the tumble buggy graphs, the faster the graph or the faster the buggy, the steeper the slope, right? The slower the buggy, the less steep the slope. Are you remembering having kind of that conversation? I hope, I hope you're remembering that. Which means, if we're starting with 35 meters per second of velocity, fast and positive, again, positive, then that line here is going to have to start very steep with a positive slope. Now, what's going to happen to it? So, because again, this is going to have to be a curve. How do we know this has to be a curve? Because what's happening to our velocity? It's changing. Our velocity is changing by this much, seven negative seven meters per second, every second. So we're starting fast and positive, but it's getting slower, which means the steepness here, the steepness has to be decreasing, getting less steep. Well, I want you to think about this. If you have a line on your XT graph that starts positive and steep, oh, that's terrible positive and steep. How does it get less steep? How can it curve and get less steep than that? I hope you're thinking what I'm thinking. That's going to produce a curve that does this. That's going to be the shape of your curve. All right. And in fact, at the end, it's going to be like completely horizontal. Now, how does that work? Well, okay, I want you to think about the tangents to the curve. Remember, we had tangents to the curve before. How steep is this curve at the beginning? Very steep. That means fast. How steep is it a little bit later? Oh, look at that, it's less steep. How steep is it a little later? Even less steep. Remember, the tangent to the curve is like taking a meter stick and rolling it across the surface of the curve like you would a, a, you know, a stick on a ball, rolling across the surface of the ball. And so notice, this, this tangent to the curve, very steep, that means fast. This one, a little bit later time, was less steep. This one, a little bit later time, even less steep. And by the time you get over to the end, five seconds in, how steep is it then? Look at it, it's level. That curve is now level at the end, meaning no slope at all. And zero slope means what? On this graph, Zero slope, oh, daggone, Philly Mall. Oh, that, that's good. That's a good one right there. 
let me let me erase that end part that kind of started to curve. That, folks, is a line on an XT graph with no slope. And that means standing still. That means by the time it gets to the end here, by the time this gets down to the five second mark, it is not moving. There's no movement anymore, which means the curve can't have any slope at the end of it. I hope that's making sense. I hope. Now, there will probably be a couple more videos coming. Uh, the next one, I think, that I'm going to post will be kind of a teaching video instead of giving you another worksheet first and then having you uh, do uh, some work. I'm probably going to do almost like a lecture kind of video. So that video will have some information that you'll need to be able to do the next assignment. All right. So you, you have to watch these videos. If you are not watching them, I implore you uh, this is how you will, you will, number one, fix your mistakes. Uh, number two, learn from those mistakes by the conversations I'm trying to uh, create here. And then, of course, when I'm posting videos that don't necessarily go with a worksheet but are like the next one I'm going to post, kind of like a lecture type thing, uh, you really need to see what's being discussed uh, so that you can know what's going on on the next assignment. So hey, I hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all safe out there and uh, hope you're all uh, keeping your wits about you and not going crazy uh, or stir crazy. So anyway, signing off. We'll talk to you later.